GBB, organizers of the second edition of the Real Estate Development Summit here in Accra, captains and industry leaders from the real industry, uh, real estate sector, uh, a very warm good morning. I think the colleague before has already presented a holistic picture of the economic scenario of the West Africa region and let me also add and concur with him uh, that a decade ago uh, the widespread perception was that Asia and Africa would be the global engines of growth because they had so much in common. The population, the young, the youthful population, uh, uh, the growing rate of urbanization and at that time the higher commodity prices. But however, post 2008 financial slowdown, which had a huge impact on Africa, uh, things did take a downturn and I think it was left for Asia for almost a decade to pull along the global economy so that uh, we do not have a global tough time as, as was a uh, couple of decades earlier. But the core parameters still are encouraging. Uh, as I said, uh, Africa and uh, Asia, and particularly India, I'll be, since I am representing uh, India here, uh, we have a youthful population. We do see increasing trends of urbanization. And more importantly, the aspirations. When we were growing up, I remember uh, the idea to own a house was only towards uh, when you were about to retire. But now we see that the uh, youngsters, as soon as they start working, they aspire to own their own house. And what has made this possible? I think, and I'll, I'll give an example of India, I think it has been the, uh, the affordable and easy access to financing through the financial institutions. And also, uh, the special institutions created by government, especially in case of India, which has helped in, in increasing the demand in real estate sector. And real estate sector is a key component uh, if, uh, as a part of the construction sector uh, in the nation's GDP. Like uh, we expect that in India, the construction sector would be contributing 13% to GDP uh, in near future and it is construction industry it ranks third amongst the 14 major sectors in term of direct indirect or induced effects in all sectors of economy if a real estate development project is progressing it leads to increase in demand for steel cement tiles furniture you name it so all the sectors of the economy get benefited whenever there is an increase in real estate development uh, if you see housing units coming up, new retail malls opening up, new hotels coming up, and office space in demand, it means that economy is doing well. The real estate sector in India is expected to reach a market size of US dollar 1 trillion by 2030 from the current state of US dollar 120 billion. And is expected, as I mentioned, to 13% of GDP by 2025. The real estate sector is growing significantly and providing much needed infrastructure for India's growing needs. Sectors such as IT, ITES, retail, consulting, and e-commerce have registered high demand for office space in recent times. Commercial office space in India is expected to cross 600 million square feet by this year end. And private equity investment in real estate is also expected to grow US dollar 100 billion by 2026, with tier one and tier two cities being the prime beneficiaries. Private equity and venture capital investment in sector reached US dollar 3 billion this year alone till September. According to one of our uh, government institutions, the foreign direct investment inflows in construction sector totaled to US dollar approximately 25 billion from the period 2000 till 2018, September. And what has been the role of government in, in seeing that this 
demand further goes, further boosts up. So the current government under Honorable uh, Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi, launched an ambitious smart cities program. And under this mission, cities were, were, were selected so that they can be either retrofitted or they can be greenfield projects or, or can be city improvement in terms of city renewal redevelopment. There were criteria laid down, cities were selected on various parameters and the total investment of rupees 201981 crore is proposed for the upliftment of 99 cities that were selected under the smart city mission. And when I say crore, it means uh, 10 million and the Indian rupee currently is ranging around uh, 73 rupees to US dollar. Uh, and the implementation of the smart city mission is being done through a special purpose vehicle which is to be set up at the city level in form of a limited company and will be pr jointly prom promoted by the state and the local urban body, both having an equal ratio in the equity shareholding. Apart from this, the government of India has launched an ambitious program and the objective to have housing for all by year 2022. And already under this Prime Minister's Avas Yojana, which is like uh, Prime Minister's housing scheme, uh, the disbursement has been for almost 6 billion houses have already been sanctioned. And uh, we, we anticipate that the momentum would be further picking up. And this is primarily the affordable housing, uh, primarily targeted towards the vulnerable sections of the society who find it difficult to own their own house. And this is expected to give a boost to the real estate, uh, real estate sector. And <clears throat> these are the two, prime, and the similar program is also for the rural sector. The, the, the Prime Minister Avas Yojana has two components, urban and rural, because we also believe that though there has been a trend of urbanization, but we should also work towards developing the rural areas so that the influx to urban centers could be reduced and the rural areas can become self-sustaining, creating livelihood opportunities in the rural area itself. We also had launched to, to attract the foreign direct investment and to have the capity flowing into the real estate market, uh, the Security Exchange Board of India has approved a real estate investment trust. And this is a platform to bring investors uh, in the Indian real estate market, and which opens up an opportunity of almost US dollar 20 billion in coming years. Earlier we used to saw that there used to be FIIs flowing into a uh, specific project and whereas many investors and pension funds and uh, sovereign wealth funds, they were looking for a platform through which they can enter the Indian real estate market and uh, recognizing the need and necessity, the government of India has, has allowed this uh, platform real estate investment trust to come up so that the investments could be channeled in a transparent and efficient manner into the real estate sector. We also have seen a number of shifts which are happening in the real estate sector. Many of the family-owned businesses are now being professionally managed. The companies, they are making much more use of centralized processes, be in term of procurement or be, in, be it for hiring of professionals, be it engineers, architects, or the project management consultants. They are also uh, increasing trend towards bringing the accountancy and management practices to the global levels because the experience has shown that if the accountancy or, and the management practices do not match up to the global standards, it is very difficult to win the investor confidence. As I mentioned, the rapid urbanization, emergence of nuclear families, and rising household income are the key factors which are, which are driving the demand for real estate sector. Thankfully, we, we rank uh, quite high in terms of attracting the foreign capital inflows 
in the property market. Apart from this, Government of India has also done 100 percent FDI approval uh, for township and settlement development projects and also real estate projects within special economic zones are also permitted to have 100 percent foreign direct investment. This all has been initiatives which, which were towards giving a boost to the real estate sector. But also we have seen a number of times that there has been a demand for, from consumers to have a regulation of this industry. Because we have also seen that there are many projects which are launched but then are delayed. The money which was raised from the prospective clients was diverted for some other purposes, whereas the project for which it was initially intended were delayed or got stuck in the implementation phase. Seeing all these trends emerging, the government of India in year 2016 enacted the Real Estate Regulation and Development Act 2016. And this act was enacted to protect interest of home buyers and to enhance transparency in real estate sector. And what was the need why it was felt, as I mentioned uh, just now also, that buyers had complained that real estate transactions were lo lopsided and heavily in favor of builders. RERA and the model code which has been set, created by government, it aims to create a more equitable and fair transaction between the seller and the buyer, especially in primary market. And RERA will give real industry its first regulator as we have SABI for capital market, we'll have, we, we ha now have RERA uh, for the real estate market. And since India is a quasi-federal structure, all the states are supposed to have their own regulators and to, to uh, draw their own guidelines for RERA. But it is mandatory for all the real estate developers to register with RERA, to have their projects approved by RERA before they, they start uh, soliciting the clients for their projects. And what are the provisions which safeguard the interest of the, the buyers? Uh, basically, it, it, it speaks about that there should be consent of the allottees or the participants of a particular project uh, to have uh, any alteration or transfer of rights or title, land title change. So I think the practice of diversion of funds, which was a major drawback and which led, which also have seen man, many companies facing the uh, law of the land. Uh, I think this is to prevent such situations, but uh, I'm hopeful that West Africa, uh, and I think uh, I shared the Indian experience because uh, as I mentioned, we face the similar challenges. We also have the similar growth prospects and maybe if we can learn from each other experiences as we continue on our journey towards economic development. Uh, being in Ghana for last years, uh, I've seen the construction picking up. Whenever the cranes are lining the uh, landscape of a city, it means the economy is growing, and we can see lots of construction happening in, in Ghana. The recently uh, inaugurated, built, uh, the airport terminal, one of the panelists was mentioning uh, that uh, why they do not have in, uh, in Nigeria and I hope soon they would also have. And I think uh, there is a tremendous potential and uh, I, I think you will be having uh, quite useful deliberations during this two-day summit and I wish you all the best. Thank you.